Nine-man volleyball is a sport few people outside the Asian community have seen. It's fast-paced, exciting, and has cultural roots that make it significant to the Chinese-American communities across the country. This week, Chinatown plays host to a tournament in Lower Manhattan, and we take the time to highlight why nine-man is culturally significant to that community. Forget what you know about streetball. There's one game that's been played for more than 70 years, yet few people outside of a community have seen it. It's called nine-man volleyball, and it is wild. Those who play it show a passion usually reserved for a spouse. I fell in love with it instantly. I loved it, and I've been doing it since then. Nine men on a slightly larger court, five or more blockers facing off against fast-paced, chaotic offenses. The exciting game is played on asphalt, not the least forgiving which makes sense considering its roots in this country. It was the 1930s when Chinese immigrants brought the sport over from Toysan, China. Its history is a subject of a documentary called Nine Man by Ursula Liang. We're talking about a time where there were still laws in place that really discriminated against Asian Americans. And we're talking about a time when there was a war going on that made anybody with a slightly Asian face um, feel like the enemy. And so at the time, Asian men were allowed in the country only as laborers not women, and the men worked isolating, emasculating jobs, doing laundry or in restaurants. Participation in sports was nowhere near the horizon, and that wasn't all. Height means everything, so a lot of us are ex excluded from those games. Nine men flourished in the margins when Chinese men got out of work most commonly on Sundays. A piece of string tied between pipes acted as the net, rags tied with rope, the ball, and with it, a community was fostered. More than 70 years later, few rules have changed in this form of what some call jungle ball, that teams travel throughout North America to play, culminating with a massive tournament each Labor Day weekend. And this weekend, New York plays host to the New York Mini Tournament, a tune-up for the big dance. So many teams, that tournament play is spread out between four locations, all of them outdoors, all of them on this tough turf. Danny Moy, a former player, is now the head organizer. He says on the face of it, this is about skills, but at its roots, it's all about building community, friendships, and brotherhood. Uh, sticking together is a big, big thing, right? You, you show them, this, you know, we're in it together, we're still here. Uh, we want to, you know, compete at a high level with, with, with the, the tr tradition and the culture that's been instilled for so many years. 100 teams are here in New York City for this weekend. We met teams from Toronto, Boston, and Baltimore. And in the 1970s, the sport started including a women's division. Six men, but just as fierce. Summer pastime is taken so seriously, the players know not to schedule big life events during these months. People know not to get married in the summertime? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. As a sport, nine man isn't without controversy. Since the beginning of the sport, you have to be at least part Asian to play. And because of that, over time, the sport has been accused of racism. Liang is amongst those who aren't sure opening up the sport right now is the answer. It's still, it's still a world that we're living in now where Asian American men uh, have um, are experiencing specific things when it comes to people viewing their athletic abilities. Um, they're ex the community is experiencing a lot of things with this anti-Asian environment, this post-COVID anti-China moment. Um, so this space that's, you know, a social, athletic, cultural space is really important. Danny Moy agrees, though he welcomes other groups to start their own leagues to maybe have the winning teams meet down the road. I think I'll be open to it. It's, it's just like, you know, uh, in a prize league, it'll probably be a little more different because you're going to have people who are the best, the strongest, the tallest to play together. And Moy's vision for the improved future includes sponsorship and maybe TV deals to feature a sport born from struggle but unwilling to bow out even generations later. Now, if you feel like you missed out because you didn't catch the action today, we've got good news for you. It continues on Sunday in Chinatown, Lower Manhattan, as the teams that make the playoffs face off.